tales for dark nights. The following performance is a first round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. That afternoon, the three sisters were in the study. Mrs. Brigham was hemming some black material. At last, she laid her work on her lap. Ah, it's no use. I cannot sew another stitch until we have a light, said she. Carolyn, who was writing some letters at the table, turned to Rebecca in her usual place on the sofa. Rebecca, you had better get a lamp, she said. Rebecca started up. Even in the dusk, her face showed her agitation. It, it doesn't seem to me that we need a lamp quite yet, she said in a piteous, pleading voice like a child's. Yes, we do, returned Mrs. Brigham peremptorily. I cannot see to sew another stitch. Rebecca rose and left the room. Presently, she entered with a lamp. She set it on the table, an old-fashioned card table which was placed against the opposite wall from the window. That opposite wall was taken up with three doors. The one small space was occupied by the table. What have you put the lamp over there for? asked Mrs. Brigham, with more of impatience than her voice usually revealed. Why didn't you set it in the hall and have done with it? Neither Carolyn nor I can see if it is on the table. I thought perhaps you would move. If I do move, we both can't sit at the table. Carolyn has her paper spread all around. Why don't you set the lamp on the study table in the middle of the room? Then we can both see. Rebecca hesitated. Her face was very pale. She looked with an appeal that was fairly agonizing at her sister, Carolyn. Why don't you put the lamp on this table as she says? Asked Carolyn almost fiercely. Why do you act so, Rebecca? Rebecca took the lamp and set it on the table in the middle of the room without another word. Then she seated herself on the sofa and placed a hand over her eyes as if to shade them and remained so. Does the light hurt your eyes and that is the reason why you didn't want the lamp? Asked Mrs. Brigham kindly. I always like to sit in the dark, replied Rebecca chokingly. Then she snatched her handkerchief hastily from her pocket and began to weep. Carolyn continued to write, Mrs. Brigham to sew. Suddenly, Mrs. Brigham, as she sewed, glanced at the opposite wall. The glance became a steady stare. She looked intently, her work suspended in her hands. Then she looked away again and took a few more stitches. Then she looked again, and again turned to her task. At last, she laid her work in her lap and stared concentratedly. She looked from the wall around the room, taking note of the various objects. Then she turned to her sisters. What is that? said she. What? asked Carolyn harshly. That strange shadow on the wall, replied Mrs. Brigham. Rebecca sat with her face hidden. Carolyn dipped her pen in the inkstand. Why don't you turn around and look, asked Mrs. Brigham in a wondering and somewhat aggrieved way. I am in a hurry to finish this letter, replied Carolyn shortly. Mrs. Brigham rose, her work slipping to the floor, and began walking around the room, moving various articles of furniture with her eyes on the shadow. Then suddenly she shrieked out, Oh, look at this awful shadow! What is it? Carolyn, look, look! Rebecca, look! What is it? All Mrs. Brigham's triumphant placidity was gone. Her handsome face was livid with horror. She stood stiffly, pointing at the shadow. Then, after a shuddering glance at the wall, Rebecca burst out in a wild wail. Oh, Carolyn, there it is again! There it is again! Carolyn Glynn, you look! said Mrs. Brigham. Look! What is that dreadful shadow? Carolyn rose, turned, and stood confronting the wall. How should I know? she said. It has been there every night since he died, cried Rebecca. Every night? Yes, he died Thursday and this is Saturday. That makes three nights, said Carolyn rigidly. She stood as if holding her calm with a vice of concentrated will. It looks like, 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 stammered Mrs. Brigham in a tone of intense horror. I know what it looks like well enough, said Carolyn. I've got eyes in my head. It looks like Edward, burst out Rebecca in a sort of frenzy of fear. Only, yes, it does, assented Mrs. Brigham, whose horror-stricken tone matched her sister's. Only, oh, it is awful. What is it, Carolyn? I ask you again, how should I know? replied Carolyn. I see it there like you. How should I know any more than you? It must be something in the room, said Mrs. Brigham, staring wildly around. 
We moved everything in the room the first night it came, said Rebecca. It is not anything in the room. Carolyn turned upon her with a sort of fury. Of course it is something in the room, said she. How you act. What do you mean talking so? Of course it is something in the room. Of course it is, agreed Mrs. Brigham, looking at Carolyn suspiciously. It must be something in the room. It is not anything in the room, repeated Rebecca with obstinate horror. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights